Hello everyone, in this video we will be solving a hacker rank medium level problem called Queen Attack 2. In this problem we are given a chessboard of length n and a position of the queen and few obstacles in her way. We need to find out how many moves a queen can make without hitting the obstacles. For instance, the example that in front of us there are no obstacles and the queen is at position 4,4. Hence, she can move in every direction without hitting any obstacles on the board. Here in this example, we have an obstacle on the board. So queen cannot move to the diagonal right bottom position. We can have more than one obstacle in the chessboard. This is the first example that is given to us. The input that we will be given is n, which is the length of board, k, which is the number of obstacles, CQ and RQ which is the position of the queen obstacles which will have the X and the Y coordinates of all the obstacles on the chessboard. So in this example we are given the length n is equal to 4, k is 0 and the position of queen is 4 comma 4. So on the chessboard this is how it would look like. Here's our queen and because we have no obstacles queen can move three directions to the left Nothing can be done on the right side, three directions to the bottom and three directions to the left diagonal. Hence the output is 9. I hope you were able to understand this problem statement. This is a medium problem but I think it's an easy problem and should not take much time to understand and solve it. So let's switch to whiteboard and talk about the solution. So let's use this chessboard as an example. If you are not familiar with chess and its rule, let me briefly talk about that. A queen has the most flexibility in terms of movements and options. Queen can move up, down, right, left and all of the four diagonals unless there is any obstacle. There are no limit to the number of spaces queen can move. So in this example where Q is in the center, she can move two spaces upwards, two spaces down, one space to the left because we have this obstacle, two spaces to the right, two spaces to the diagonal upwards, similarly two spaces to the diagonal downwards, two spaces to the upwards left and two spaces, one space bottom right. So the number of moves are 13. It's easy to map it out on a chart. Now let's think about how we can simplify the algorithm to solve it. Like I mentioned earlier, the total number of directions that queen can move are 8. If we identify those 8 directions, we can easily build an algorithm. I will record the direction and the corresponding changes in the i and the j index in this table. y axis is represented by the index i and the x axis is represented by the index j. So with q in the center, Let's start with the up direction. What changes needs to be done? So for up direction, our i is going to be decremented by 1 and j will be the same. As the j column is constant, only the i is decreasing. Similarly, if I am going down, my i will be incremented by 1 and j will be 0 or constant. So nothing, no changes in there. So every time I go to the next step in downward direction, I will increment my i pointer. Let's say my i here is 3. So if I want to get this position, my i will become 4, this will become 5. And when I was going in the upward direction, my i was decrementing. So it was going to 2 and then to 1. After down, let's do left. So when I'm going towards left, my i is constant. So no changes there and my j is going decremented. So j will be minus 1 and if I go to right it's going to be the opposite. So when i is still 0 but my j will be incremented. Now comes the diagonals. Let's do left up this direction. When I'm moving to left up both my i and j are updated. Both are decrementing. So minus 1 and minus 1 left down. So when I'm coming down to this direction my i is being incremented but my j is still decrementing. 
write up so when i'm going to write up my j is incrementing but i is decrementing and the last is write down in that case both are incrementing i and j so once we have identified these operations all we need to do is pick up the current position of q which is right now 3 comma 3 apply all of these eight operations to it and whatever is the new value check if it is not matching to the obstacles if it is not matching to any obstacle also check if it is not going beyond the boundaries if these two conditions are met then we can increment our result and say that queen can make that move after we go through all of the eight directions we will have all of the right moves recorded in this variable and all we have to do is return it i hope you were able to follow this explanation depending on the position of our queen our iteration will vary a bit but if we try to generalize it and think from the worst case scenario let's say my q is at this position the number of iterations that i will have to do is o of n which is phi here plus this direction which will again give me phi plus this direction which will again give me phi so the total will be 15 or o of 3n because we are only looking at three direction even if my q was in the center half of the iteration is in the upward direction and half of the iteration is the is in the downwards direction hence o of 3n is our time complexity Gen, uh, and if i simplify it further the big o notation for time complexity is going to be o of n where n is the size of the chessboard and our space complexity is o of 1 i hope you were able to understand this explanation let me show you how this can be implemented using c sharp here is my c sharp solution in the main method i start by initializing the moves which is going to record all of the moves that queen can make then i have created this hash set which has all the eight operations that we need to do the next step is i'm converting the obstacles into a hash set of type tuple so that it is easy to look it up and then clean up if we have already hit an obstacle while queen is making her move it can hit an obstacle once it cannot hit the same obstacle twice while it is going in a different direction hence i am making it into a hash set so that it is easy to look it up later and then remove it if we have already gone through that obstacle then i start the for each loop on the number of movements that we have just recorded so the total iterations will be eight then i call this helper method calculate moves passing the values if during that moment queen faces an obstacle it will decrement the value k in this helper method i have this while loop running until the length is less than or equal to length then i have created these two new variables that will be updated until the while loop is running i have a validation to make sure that the new position of queen is valid it means it is there on the chessboard and it did not jump out of the chess then i check if my k which is the number of obstacle is greater than zero and the new position matches to any of the obstacles if these conditions are true then it means that we have hit an obstacle and we cannot proceed so i am removing that obstacle from this hash set setting the length to n plus one so that we can jump out of this while loop and decrementing the number of obstacle k if we did not meet any obstacle then it goes under the else condition it will increment this moves variable and also the length if the new position of queen is outside the chess board then i'm setting the length to n plus one so that we can jump out of the while loop after this while loop is complete i'm returning the moves and the new value of k once i have iterated through all of the movements i will have the number of moves in this variable and i am returning it on line 32 thank you for watching this video i hope you were able to follow my explanation and this logic 
If this video was helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. This source code is available on my GitHub repository. The link is there in the description below. Feel free to check that out and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.